another person. <laughs> Side of it. There we go. And it's warm. Okay, I'm trying to get the copper tape off slowly so I can reuse it again because it rips easy. And then removing the RF shield right there. The bottom part is soldered in, so I had to unsolder the two points where it's soldered on. Stick that screwdriver underneath it to lift up as I'm heating it up to lift it up. And they're bent around there some, so I'm trying to unbend it and got it off. And then there's a paper kind of coating um, tape right there, getting the tape off. That's about where the bad capacitors are puffed up over there. Checking where the um, capacitors are soldered in there and making sure I got the right ones. Heating it up and pushing on it, and the uh, one way to lift it up from where I'm soldering it, and then I go on the other side and push it the other way until it comes all the way out. Using a big soldering iron, but my little 15 watt soldering iron isn't heating up good anymore. That would have been better to use on that. <coughs> Got that one out and working on the other one. Same way, just um, doing it back and forth, opposite way of where I'm heating it up and and it gets it out of there. This one's a little bit tighter, so I I go and get a um, that little pliers to help me pull it out as I heat it up. And then I go and try and find some new uh, capacitors. I got them already. Right there in that bag. <laughs> got all of them from replacing them on old motherboards that uh, the capacitors blow up or puff up or explode. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it through and the have to do the solder underneath there to push it through because the holes ain't all the way through. So I'm pushing it through a little bit and heating up the solder and boom it pops through and then I can push them through, straighten out the pins and and then I go get the solder and try and solder them back on. I gotta be careful because there's surface mounted resistors um, right by it and with that big soldering iron you don't want to you know fill the gaps up between them bending the pins back and forth to cut them off and then soldering it again because I can solder it cleaning off the black stuff from the soldering iron with the that knife there then I'm checking to make sure I ain't shorting out any of the parts and it looked good putting that rubber piece back on it looks kind of in the way and that's that paper shield, and then I got to put that bottom um, RF shield back on, straighten out one of the pins that the RF shield goes on. And the cop, I mean the solder is um, over the hole, so I got to heat up the solder and push down on it to try and get the pin to go through the hole, and then solder it down. And try and bend it over, back over too as I'm soldering it down. There was a little dent in the top of there, so I just dented it back. 
Put my tape back on and I'm looking at these uh kinda got some shavings on the edges when I open it up so I'm just cutting those little shavings off so it will fit down again good. I don't want to glue it back shut so look for a tie and I thought a twisty tie but none of them were long enough so I had some um I guess they call them zip ties and I go and get that right there and put it on and and that worked good for keeping it closed and I just cut the excess off with the X-Acto knife there and that's it <laughs> On. I don't hear no, but I didn't hear no clicking from it neither till I plugged in power. Okay, plugging the power up here. Turn it on, set to turn on. And see, don't hear it anymore. Just hear a transformer sound. So, fixed it. Hee <laughs> hee.